Well, good morning. If you're Central Time Zone East, or I'm sorry, Central Time Zone West, otherwise, good afternoon. Uh, very thankful for your attendance to this Tuning Payroll webinar series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, preparing and processing your year-end for payroll. A um, lot to get through. Um, we are going to discuss uh, a little bit about the ACA changes that have come out, the Affordability Care Act, and their impact to payroll specifically. Won't get into too much on the HR uh, uh, impacts of ACA, um, but uh, we'll try to focus on the payroll side, and more specifically the changes that Microsoft has made uh, in and around ACA. But before I get too deep, I've uh, got a couple uh, housekeeping items. We do have uh, some upcoming webinars. The next one is uh, man managing mandatory sick leave with our comprehensive leave manager product. Uh, that is uh, December 19th at 1 p.m. So if you live in one of those municipalities or states that require you to pay sick leave to your uh, part-time employees, um, this would be a good webinar for you to sit through. So uh, it talks about how you can ensure that you're only providing the uh, legally prescribed amount of uh, time to those part-time employees. And then to get the sales item out of the way, we do have a current promotion going on with our products right now. You buy two, any two products, uh, you get one free, and that runs through the end of February. So my name is Tom Franz. I'm the product manager here at Integrity Data. Um, my contact information is currently on the screen. This slide will be up again at the end. Uh, always feel free to contact me directly if you ever have questions about product functionality, um, uh, product, you know, integrity data products, or even the Microsoft HR payroll functionality. Um, I'm very uh, uh, well uh, versed in those areas and uh, hopefully can answer most of the questions that you might have. Um, talk about some other ways to get help uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, just to give you a quick bit of background on me, I've been with Integrity Data almost nine years. Uh, I've started out doing quality assurance. I've dabbled in uh, actually writing some code, some development. I end up going to a lot of the sales conferences, and currently I am the product manager uh, managing uh, the feature set of the Integrity Data product line and always looking for new great ideas for uh, adding additional functionality that would be needed to the Microsoft Dynamics GP HR and payroll functionality uh, to make uh, your jobs easier. So um, just to talk a little bit about our agenda today, we're going to review the uh, year-end payroll changes that Microsoft has released. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the standard order of operations for your year-end payroll tasks. Uh, we'll talk about how to how to even start troubleshooting when your 941s don't reconcile to your W2s, uh, because that can be a, a painful process. I've worked through those uh, uh, a few times with uh, different uh, customers and partners, and uh, can sure be difficult. So I'm going to try to provide you some tools uh, for how to start troubleshooting those. And then at the end, we'll uh, do a little Q&A section, and then I've got uh, some links I'm going to share with you that uh, should have some good, helpful information. So just because we are a, uh, we're a payroll company that uh, delivers software, so uh, that's very much like uh, you know the, the Dilbert cartoon line, and it's uncanny how many of those Dilbert cartoons actually play right along with our business line. So uh, uh, as always, payroll data is extremely important. You'll hear me mention this as we go through the, uh, the order of operations for your payroll tasks. Uh, backups are easy to do uh, as long as you do them before the data is uh, damaged. So as you work through your year-end tasks, uh, backups are a good thing. So, uh, so let's start out. We're going to talk a little bit about the year-end update changes um, that are coming uh, that actually have been released by Microsoft already. Um, for Dynamics GP 10.0, if you're running Dynamics GP 10, you need to upgrade. There's no update scheduled. Uh, you won't get any of the latest uh, techs 
code changes. Um, you can still pull down the table updates, but if they make a code change for a specific state tax calculation or something along those lines, you're not going to get those. Neither are you going to get uh, uh, the new ACA changes. So Dynamics GP10, if you're still on Dynamics GP10, oh, you need to get upgraded sooner than later if you're running payroll. For Dynamics GP2010, there's uh, no W-2 form changes planned. Uh, there are some minor changes to the electronic filing uh, process. There's some po product quality fixes around the year-end process, uh, some, uh, a few changes on the W-3, uh, pretty negligible. Uh, some changes on 1099 interest, which don't really apply to payroll, but it seems like your payroll people end up providing a lot of those interest uh, 1099s to you know the uh, C-level executives and owner uh, company owners uh, as corporation partners and so on. 1099R distribution code changes, and then uh, there was a change to the fixed asset luxury auto depreciation. So here again, not necessarily payroll related, but definitely has payroll impacts. And those are all the changes that were included in the year-end update for GP2010. So for Dynamics GP2013, you have all of those same changes that were included in 2010. Uh, in addition, you're, see, you're going to see some Affordable Care Act changes. And this is an important distinction. Uh, one thing you always want to remember, um, updates that Microsoft provides, whether it's a hot fix, year-end update, mid-year tax change, uh, tax round two, different things like that that Microsoft releases, they're always all-inclusive. So if you're currently on uh, GP2013 Service Pack 2 and you apply the year-end update, you're going to get the R2 changes that were released earlier in the year. So be aware of that. Um, uh, because there are some uh, pretty hefty changes, uh, some great new features that came in with R2, but just be aware that it is an all-inclusive up update and plan accordingly uh, for your update process. Um, one other thing, the reason that you're not seeing the Affordable Care Act changes in Dynamics GP 2010 is Dynamics GP 2010 uh, end of support life cycle, the leave ends in October. I know it's before the end of the year, so Microsoft's thinking, and I, I'm not sure that I fully agree with it, but their thinking is uh, customers running Dynamics GP 2010 won't process year-end with Dynamics GP 2010 in 2015. As such, they don't need the ACA changes. Now, I, I would uh, take a little bit of an exception with that and say, well, you have to start capturing some of the information that's going to be reported on some of the Affordable Care Act uh, year-end forms, and we'll get into those later, uh, that are coming out. So at the end of calendar year 2015, uh, we're going to have to report on uh, some uh, Affordable Care Act information. Uh, the easiest way is to start capturing those that information January 1, 2015. And if you don't, uh, you're going to have to make uh, provision for that at the end of the year and go, you know, catch up that information. There are ways to change it. It will be editable, but uh, it'd be easier if you had Dynamics GP 2013 in place now so that you can start affecting those changes uh, sooner than later. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Dynamics GP 2015 RTM. Uh, the Dynamics GP 2015 release actually came out after the year-end update. So it is out and available. Uh, I know it's on partner source. I don't know that it's made it to customer source right now, but that release is out there and available. I would suggest payroll customers not upgrade to Dynamics GP 2015 until after, at the soonest, tax round two, which is the March time frame, because the Affordable Care Act changes – the, the window updates that we'll get into later uh, are not in the RTM release. They will be in and included with tax round two. So to re here again, the way uh, we need to start capturing the ACA information for the year-end reporting in 2015, we need some of those window updates that aren't currently in 2015. 
the tables are there, so they made the table changes and got those into GP 2015, but they did not make the changes to the windows. So there's no way to populate the data in the tables until they make the changes to the windows. Hope that all makes sense. So uh, I wouldn't foresee most payroll companies, payroll customers rather, um, upgrading to 2015 uh, in December, given everything else uh, we payroll people have to do. And I say we because I spent uh, 15 years processing payroll, uh, doing financial related work in uh, the automobile franchise industry. So I get the pain. I've filled out the 940s and the 941s and done the W-2s and the 1099s and all of that myself. So uh, I understand people's willingness to attend this type of webinar. Anything to make that process easier. So what's coming? So in uh, uh, December 19th is the target release date for the 2015 tax table updates. It's important that you don't apply that update until after you've completed your last payroll for 2014. So you don't want the new FICA Social Security wage limit as an example and those changes to uh, the different states that are identified there. Uh, if you've got employees working in the, and taxable in those affected states, you don't want those tax table updates to take place until the 2015 payrolls. So. Just be aware that that release is, is scheduled for the 19th of December um, and uh, will include a change to the FICA Social Security wage limit. That's the biggest, uh, really about the only uh, federal change uh, as it applies to uh, payroll taxes. Uh, notwithstanding, and we'll get into some of these other limits uh, that uh, a little later talking about uh, uh, 401k withholding limit and so on. So let's let's jump into Dynamics GP 2013 R2 and take a look real quick at some of those ACA changes that Microsoft has put out. We'll see the if you haven't upgraded to R2, uh, the UI uh, it is a little different. This does have the year-end update applied. So uh, we'll look at some of those ACA changes. First, we'll jump over to the setup, and we'll look at health insurance setup. Now, it's important to note that uh, the ACA changes that Microsoft has put out there for populating the data that will appear um, on the new uh, reporting forms for 2015 related to ACA, specifically the 1095C and the 1094C, um, those, that information is populated through the human resources module. So if you're exclusively a payroll customer, not using HR, um, you may want to at least consider implementing a portion of HR, uh, maybe the health insurance codes um, and your employee dependents so that you can capture that information. So no way to populate this data from payroll exclusively. You have to use the human resources module. So if we come in here, we'll notice there's two new fields uh, on the window called Affordable Care Act information. There's Offer of Coverage Codes and Safe Harbor Codes. Um, so, and these exist both at the setup level and if we look at the card level, they're also on the employee card right down here. So all of the standard defaulting in and roll down functionality from setup to the employee applies. Uh, you want to be careful using uh, roll down uh, on some of this because a lot of these, uh, a lot of this information can be employee specific. Um, if we just take a look at some of the available codes here, so offer these are your various offer of coverage codes. And I've got some more information in the uh, slide deck. We'll get to uh, kind of explains some of these. Um, I will make this slide deck available. Uh, we're going to send it out via email after the webinar, and it will also be available for download on our website. Um, but those are the offer of coverage codes that you can assign, um, and then the safe harbor codes. So if you're not familiar with 
um, the kind of the two of the key areas around the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it has to do with eligibility. So I have an employee that's eligible for coverage. Well, I have to offer them coverage. What offer of coverage code applies? The next part is I have to ensure that the insurance that I'm providing to my employers, my employees, is affordable. And uh, the affordability calculation is handled through safe harbor codes. So um, I'm not going to get too deep into that, but I do have some uh, reference information in the slide deck that uh, you can use and refer back to later on. So we've got those two window level changes, so health insurance setup and health insurance enrollment. And then if we go look at the uh, employee uh, dependence window, uh, we have to track for all of the covered employee dependents, well, not even covered, all of the employees dependents, we have to track whether they're covered or not. Um, maybe uh, semi-difficult in certain situations, but fundamentally they added this new uh, drop-down list for each employee dependent. You can identify whether they're covered or not, and when it gets into reporting on that 1095C later on in the year, uh, at the end of 2015, we'll have to identify that month by month. So you'll notice that uh, A, let me just pull one up here, an employee uh, dependent can be marked as covered or not covered. The system's going to capture the date, uh, the, the user date that you make the change, and then use the state of the employee at the end of the month to determine whether that employee was covered or not for that month. Now, there's still some ambiguity in the law. Uh, not a lot of clarity provided by the IRS yet as to whether uh, if an employee uh, dependent is covered for part of a month, are they covered in that month? Generally speaking, um, I believe the direction the IRS is giving is that if they're covered in any part of the month, they're covered for that month. But I would, I would refer you to uh, your uh, legal counsels, your CPAs, uh, to kind of drive uh, some of that information a little more clearly. And hopefully it'll get more clear as we progress through the year. For, the, for now, as your employee's coverage, employee dependent coverage changes throughout the year, the employee and the dependent's coverage changes throughout the year, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of that in the new employee dependence or in the modified employee dependence window. Okay? So those are the only changes that have currently been made to the system related to ACA. But if we jump back over to our uh, presentation, so uh, if you look, I've got all of the, the descriptions from all of the offer of coverage codes. Um, I'm not going to try to go through each one of these and describe them. It will be available to you. Um, I've got uh, links out to the information where this resides at the IRS site. Here are all of our safe harbor codes. And then this is what uh, Microsoft is forecasting to come in the 2015 year-end update. And as always, it's subject to change. But um, if we look at our Edit W2 window, there's two new buttons down on the bottom right, 1095C and Dependents. Um, and you'll see that the 1095C, uh, edit 1095C information window has things like uh, offer of coverage code, the employee share, which is going to conceptually come from the employee deduction, uh, the section 4980H um, uh, amount, which is, I believe that's the employer paid portion, if you will. And then if we look at the 1095C covered individuals, um, all of the employees, you'll be able to select their uh, dependent and identify whether they were covered for the year or which months in which they had coverage. So this is where I was saying, if you're not using HR, you're going to have to come in here and you want to use Dynamics GP for the 1095C filing, you're going to have to come in here to, to fill out all of that information. It will be a manual process. 
So another reason why you may want to consider implementing HR if you don't already. The new, uh, uh, relatively new pricing model for uh, Dynamics GP customers, HR is included with your core payroll uh, licensing. So that kind of covers the ACA changes. I know I went through that fairly quickly, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it because we've got a lot to get through. Again, all of that information that I went through, I've got uh, uh, reference links that we'll be sending you after the webinar. So let's get in and we'll start talking about some of those payroll tasks, those things that we need to do uh, for year end. Um, I'm of the opinion, and this was something that I did when I processed payroll back in the day, uh, before I actually got done with all of my, before I processed my final payroll of the calendar year, I went in and I did a mock year end and made sure everything balanced out. And you can do that with Dynamics GP as well. Uh, first, make sure you're running the latest tax tables. Probably are, but uh, make sure you're, uh, the latest ones that are currently published uh, are dated July 1st. So make sure you've got those installed. But you can go in and actually create your year end wage work file and verify your W-2s and 1099s and do all of that and then turn around and just remove that year end file prior to completing all of your pay runs. Now, once you've created the year end wage work file, you can't have a payroll in process to do that. You can't uh, process a payroll while the year end wage work file exists and so on. But if you've got a period of time in between or you know, uh, in between payrolls that you can go in and actually create the year-end wage file, make sure that everything balances out. Um, it's a good thing to do. And uh, main reason I say that is uh, let's say you missed uh, a deduction for an employee and you need to go back and pick up, uh, and it's a tax shelter deduction. So you need to make sure you've got their box one, three, and five numbers on their W-2 correct when you process your W-2. Well, if you've already processed your final pay for the year, you have no way to go fix that and get that money back from the employee and so on before the end of the year. So I would encourage you to uh, uh, do a mock year end prior to the end of the year uh, if you can. Uh, so once you've completed all your pay runs for 2014, make a backup. Backups are priceless when you have catastrophic failure or you have a, a problem somewhere and you need to go back and fix it. So make a backup. Uh, make sure you've installed the year-end update. Uh, create your uh, year-end wage work file. Um, and not a bad idea at that point to go ahead and make another backup so that if you need to come back to that point in time, you can. Uh, just as a note, you can start processing your 2015 payrolls after you've created the year-end wage work file. So don't be afraid just because you haven't actually printed your W-2s and so on doesn't mean you can't go ahead and start processing 2015 payrolls. So, so from our year-end checklist perspective, um, what do we do? So we create our year, we've created our year-end wage work file. Um, we can verify our W-2 and 1099 information off of the uh, uh, year-end wage report. Um, we can print our W-2s and W-3s. Uh, shameless plug. We do have a product that allows you to email the W-2s to the employees. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to contact us so you can email those W-2s to your employees. Uh, if you report electronically to the SSA, you can create your uh, electronic MRAF file or uh, the electronic uh, W-2s for them. Print your 1099-Rs and your 1099 and your 1096. Uh, if you're using HR and you have a practice of, an, of archiving inactive employees, now would be a good time to do that. Um, yeah, go ahead and set up your 2015. Some of this is more uh, financials module related, but before you can start processing 2015 payrolls, you do have to have your 2015 fiscal periods created. Uh, closing your 2014 uh, fiscal periods, again, that's kind of a financials uh, function, but uh, it is something that can be done during the payroll process. Um, 
go pick up those 2015 payroll tax tables. So like I said, those are coming out January or December 19th. So make sure you get your new payroll tax tables before you start processing your 2015 tables. Very important, especially if you're in a state that has a take, state tax uh, change. Um, let's see. And let's jump back into uh, Dynamics GP. And we'll take a look at uh, kind of the, what the process of the windows are that we use in Dynamics GP to complete our year-end process. most of which are under the routine section in the payroll navigation. So the first thing we want to do is uh, create our gear end wage work file. This will default to the year of the user date process. Um, this is a uh, uh, PTO manager uh, message that pops up uh, and uh, you only want to do this if you're actually processing your year end. Um, a lot of companies will, uh, people will actually uh, do a mock uh, year end wage work file and so forth, like I described earlier, um, to uh, reconcile their 941s quarterly even um, or prior to the end of the year. Obviously, you don't want to uh, reset carryover and year-to-date amounts uh, if you're not actually completing the year-end process. So, so now the year-end wage work file is complete and we can come in and we can print our year-end report. Review that, use this report for reconciling to our quarterly 941s if needed. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the report, you will see there is a, a summary totals. So ideally, this is where you'd be able to reconcile this right to your 941s. And, you know, it, in those times when you have differences, that's where, you know, the troubleshooting that we'll get into later on how to go about fixing your information. Okay. So, uh, if we do need to edit an employee's W-2, look at that. Um, and it looks like looks like some of this, some of these changes actually made it. I'm, I'm running a pre-release of year-end, so I'm going to assume that this is not in the official year-end update. So, but uh, they've actually already got the buttons. They probably put them on there for screenshot purposes, and then hid the buttons uh, prior to the year end update. So, but regardless, you can come in, uh, make changes to wages. Um, if you've got, you know, box 14 amounts or whatever you need to update, you can edit the W-2 here, get it right, and make sure that it all balances then to your uh, 941s. You can print your W-2s. Um, if you're using um, uh, the Integrity Data uh, Employee Email Suite. This is where you would go in to email W-2s to those employees that have um, granted you permission. Because um, uh, for W-2s, employees do have to um, allow employers to actually send them the W-2 electronically. If they want paper, you have to provide them paper. Okay. And then email... Uh, we can get into, uh, I don't know that I have any pension employees set up. No, I don't. So if I had my pension employees set up, I could come in and, and uh, modify their uh, 1099-R information, uh, print the 1099-Rs. I'm just kind of going down the list there. Um, if I report electronically to the SSA, this is where I come in and I create my electronic filing file. If I have, uh, if I'm in the uh, food and beverage industry and I have tipped employees, I might need to create form 8027. Come in and and uh, create that form, print it off. Uh, let's 
see. I will just touch on these checklists. I don't know how common they are used, but I'll just make sure that you're aware uh, that there are checklists. You can you can create your own. You can edit these, uh, put your own items in there, reminders and so on, and those will pop up as you log into Dynamics GP. So if you have a reminder uh, at some point to run a mock payroll or run a mock year end and validate your year end information, uh, you can create that routine uh, on your own right here in this window and it'll kind of guide you through that process on, on an annual basis. And then uh, integrity data, I'll get into this a little later on. We do have a uh, uh, enhanced retirement uh, product that allows uh, uh, for you know catch-up provisions, shared maximum across retirement plans, and so on. Well, that the the catch-up provision amount typically changes on an annual basis. This you can use the retirement catch-up mass update window to go in and update everybody all at once. So that's in there. Um, if you need to, uh, so we created our year-end wage work file. If you need to remove it, so you're doing a mock or Oops, I need to go fix a bunch of data, and it's easier to do that, maybe with a manual check or something along those lines. Come into the Remove Payroll Year-End Information under the Utilities menu and remove your year-end information. So just generally speaking, from a Dynamics GP perspective, payroll year-end processing, those are your key areas that you're going to work with. Okay. All right, uh, just talk through some of the other uh, product functionality that has uh, year-end implications, uh, specifically the benefit self-service product. Uh, it's a, a one that's generally adopted at this point is the business portal version of benefit self-service. For Dynamics GP 2015, there's new uh, benefit management and enrollment functionality that's come out with GP 2015 that replaces this business portal functionality. But the process that you go through at the end of the year is generally the same. Um, so you'd create any future effective benefits. So if you had health insurance premiums that were going to change January 1, you'd identify those uh, changes in Dynamics GP, open up an enrollment period. Uh, your employees would go in and they would complete all their enrollments. Your HR administrator would review those enrollments. Uh, you'd complete your final pay of 2014. Activate your future effective benefit records. Uh, post all of your employee benefit enrollments. Uh, either spot check or go through a comprehensive review of all those benefits and make sure that they match what the employee actually enrolled in. And then you can begin processing your 2015 payrolls. So some of these steps would overlap uh, the other year-end processing that we discussed. But generally speaking, uh, that's the general process. Some other products that Integrity Data has that have impacts to year-end uh, are employee accounts and splits and FTU Manager product has a piece of functionality to copy employee positions because you got to do that on a, a fiscal year basis. A lot of times your calendar years and fiscal years match up, so you want to make sure that you've, before you start processing payrolls for the new fiscal year predominantly, but calendar year in this case, Make sure you've done, you've copied your employee positions. Um, and we have uh, an update uh, for that functionality that was released in our year end uh, that makes that a uh, much uh, more reliable process. Our enhanced retirement plans, like I mentioned, the uh, uh, catch up contribution limits have changed. Uh, the 401k is 6,000 on amounts over 18. Simple IRA is 3,000 over 12.5. Roth IRA is 1,000, and then the 403Bs is uh, 6,000 on amounts over 53. Um, you will want to go through and just review your shared maximums and make sure that those are correct. Um, our life insurance tax calculator product that handles group term life insurance and splitting up both the taxable and non-taxable portions, uh, always a good idea just to verify those IRS rates are, are the same. Those rates haven't changed since 1982, so I don't foresee them changing anytime soon, but uh, just a good time to take a peek and make sure that they're what you expect them to be. Our employee email suite. So if you're electronically sending out your W-2s, um, 
you'll want to uh, ensure you've got our latest year-end update uh, for the email suite um, because it's got the form changes in it. So you don't want to send out a 2013 W-2 for calendar year 2014. Um, and then we do have a couple webinars coming up uh, specifically around the employee email suite. For comprehensive lead manager and then also uh, the PTO manager product, which uh, is a Microsoft uh, product. In actuality, it's an integrity data uh, OEM uh, product that Microsoft sells and supports. Uh, you'll want to go in and apply any carryover limits. We saw that prompt that happens during the year-end process for PTO manager. Comprehensive lead manager uh, has similar functionality. And then uh, if you're using lump sum uh, uh, leave types, you'll want to make sure that you've uh, created your lump sum posting dates. If you're upgrading from SB2 to R2 as part of your year-end process, make sure you go out and get your integrity data products upgraded to R2 as well. There's uh, some, some significant core product functionality changes that required a change in all of the integrity data uh, products. That is a single uh, install and update process, so uh, try to make it as easy as possible for you. So let's talk a little bit about uh, troubleshooting. So you know, when my 941 doesn't uh, match my W-2 uh, year-end wage report, what do I do or where do I start looking? Um, the areas that I've seen uh, most commonly cause problems in that reconciliation process is a manual check that was created incorrectly. So if somebody went in and created a manual check for wages but didn't, pick, didn't put in the federal tax transaction on the manual check window. Um, and let's just jump in to GP real quick and I'll show you exactly what I was referring to there. So if we go to the manual checks window, we're creating a new manual check for an employee. And I have wage a wage transaction for pay code hour, let's say, for a hundred dollars, you know, at uh, ten hours. I I also have to make sure that I identify a federal if those wages are federal taxable I need to come in and say he had $100 in, uh, I'm sorry, this is the tax amount. So let's say the tax amount is uh, $1.50 and the taxable wage, uh, it would be more like 15 and the taxable wage is $100. All right, I need to create these for federal tax, FICA, Social Security, Medicare, state, local, right? And then if you are in the food and beverage industry and you have uh, you know, tax on tips and so on, you want to make sure to create the correct transaction type. So I've often seen that incorrect created manual checks can cause problems on some of our year-end reporting. And you'll typically see this uh, show up on your uh, 941s before you even get to year-end. So... Um, TSA changes on deductions, so if you have a deduction that's tax sheltered and you make a change to that mid-year, you're going you're gonna to cause problems for yourself. Uh, there's a lot of information that uh, in the payroll process that assumes the uh, tax shelteredness of a deduction is set forever. So once you've got history on a deduction for an employee on whether it's tax sheltered or not, um, so paycheck history on a deduction for an employee. You can't change natively through the system whether it's tax sheltered or not. But that doesn't prevent you from going into uh, SQL Server and editing the table directly. There are some gotchas to that. You've got to be very careful, know what you're doing, uh, specifically pay attention to that tax shanty field that's in the uh, deduction uh, employee deduction maintenance table. Um, I think the UPR 00400 table. So if you get in and start messing with that, make sure you know what you're doing and only do it uh, in between uh, tax calendar years. Uh, business expense pay codes, oftentimes uh, the report as wages is either marked or not marked incorrectly. So pay close attention to that. Um, and then one of the biggest causes of problems is when Summary tables don't fully get updated during the payroll posting process because of 
some catastrophic failure during the posting process. So all of that to say, if you have a catastrophic failure during payroll posting, and uh, maybe you just wipe it out and start over, you, you may want to take some extra time, maybe uh, go out and uh, do a, a 941 quarter end uh, report and make sure that all of your summary tables match your transaction tables and so on. Uh, if you get halfway through a pay payroll posting process and something fails, you may see where transactions exist with no summary data. Certain summary data is updated, but not others. So oftentimes that's where that's where you can start looking. So in the case where your 941s and W2s don't match, take some time and, and maybe go back through the, the memory banks and see if you can remember an instance where maybe you had a fail payroll posting and go back and try to focus on those areas. Uh, kind of the key payroll uh, tax ta or the payroll tables that affect some of this uh, 941 W2 information are the check history table, transaction history, employee summary, uh, and the, the UPR 900900, that's for wages, the UPR 00901, that's tips wages, um, and then your payroll tax liabilities is in the 30200 table. So for those of you that have access to SQL, sometimes you can uh, pump some of that out to uh, a smart list or something along those lines and start uh, slicing and dicing that data to figure out where your problem's at. Um, here again, I would encourage you to perform uh, this year-end process quarterly. So when you do your 941s, go ahead and create a year-end wage work file, reconcile year-to-date W-2s to, to the 941s that you've got to date, and just save yourself some trouble later on. Because if you can identify those problems early, earlier in the year, you have more time to try to get them fixed within the calendar year. Because we all know once that tick of the clock occurs and the calendar flips over from one year to the next, it's too late to go back and fix payroll data uh, oftentimes. So you can't go back and get money back from the employee or um, uh, you know, add additional taxable income to them without you know, a, a large headache. So just be aware of that. So where do we go to get help? And we're making good time. All right, so where do we go to get help? Um, uh, I've got links in the slide deck. We'll be sending that out after the webinar uh, for where to go get the payroll tax updates and the year-end updates on both customer source and partner source. Um, uh, the Dynamics GP Services and Support Team has been very uh, good with putting out some good uh, year-end blogs. I've got links to all of those blogs. Talk about the ACA changes. They talk about what's coming next year and so on. Um, integrity Data, if you go out to, to our integrity-data.com site, we've got a, a collection of blogs out there. Um, there's some really good KB articles. So in those situations when you're uh, 941 and payroll summary reports don't match and you're trying to figure out you know where the discrepancies at there's some good KV articles um, out on customer source and I've got links to all of those always you can contact your partner it's a good resource for gathering information on um, year-end processing a lot of partners have uh, helpful you know step-by-step -step documents uh, checklists if you will on what to do during year-end if you've got specific questions, the GPUG community boards, uh, go to gpug.com. If you're not a GPUG member, um, those boards are still searchable. So you can go out there and, and there's, if you've got the question, chances are somebody else probably has in the past as well. So like with any uh, of those types of boards, go out there, search for your problem, and uh, have a pretty good likelihood of finding it. If you are a GPUG member and you don't find the answer to your question, post it up there. I, I, along with other uh, uh, Dynamics GP payroll experts, watch that uh, those questions and uh, try to reply to them. Um, I make it my goal to always be the first one to reply to every HR payroll question that's out there. So uh, don't get them all, but I try. So we're going to jump into uh, uh, a time for Q&A if anybody has any. So if you have a specific question about year-end processing, um, if you have uh, or a suggestion on year-end processing, uh, feel free to uh, uh, use the uh, 
webinar messaging information uh, window and type your question in and we'll see if we can get an answer for it. Um, one thing I'll mention um, is that uh, uh, while we're waiting to see if any questions come in, I mentioned uh, the, uh, the GP team and some of their uh, blogs that they've put out on uh, the ACA changes. This is one that Terry Healy put out. I'm sure everybody's pretty familiar with their with uh, Terry. Uh, she is uh, definitely one of the most knowledgeable people out there in and around uh, Dynamics GPHR payroll. And there's uh, she talks about the tables that were added, um, uh, table changes that were made. Um, shows the you know the health coverage information, the new affordability codes and safe harbor codes that were added and so on. So this information is all available out there uh, if you want that. Um, there was another one they put out. Uh, I'll show you here. Um, uh, it talks about some of the mandatory reporting on the 1094, 1095Cs, uh, how to go about. Uh, so if you're a payroll only customer and you're wanting to get uh, uh, human resources in place to track this talks about what you need to do uh, to go, you know, what what the process is you would go through to to get that information to get your system set up to track that information. Um, let's see, I've got links to some IRS sites on employer provided health coverage, some Q and A's, uh, and then also the uh, what, uh, what information is report, reportable by uh, ALEs, applicable large employers, which is basically uh, defined as, for calendar year 2015, it's any employer with over 100 employees. For calendar year 2016, will be any employers with uh, employees over 50 employees. So uh, some of the reporting requirements are uh, being deferred for that 50 to 100 employee base um, uh, company until 2016, but if you're over 100, you're going to have to report 1095C in calendar year 2015, so make sure you're tracking the information. I'm not seeing any questions come in. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, I promise to put my uh, contact information back up on the screen, so let's do that. Um, if you here again, if you have a question, specific question, you want to contact me uh, directly, uh, uh, GPUG message boards, uh, shoot me an email, give me a call. Happy to help out if I can. Uh, appreciate everybody's time. And uh, good luck this year processing your year-end payrolls, and I hope all goes well. Thank you for your time.